Hello, Internet. Uh, I just get back uh, from uh, Universal Studios in Orlando, and uh, I kind of wanted to make this video uh, while the trip is fresh in my mind. So if anybody else is going, um, maybe some of the things that I saw there or learned there uh, may prove helpful to you in some way. I don't know. This is my first time making like a talking head video on the internet, so <clears throat> I apologize if it sucks, but there is probably some good information in here. So you have to bear with my terrible production values. Uh, okay, so I have some notes conveniently here on the computer, so it looks like I'm looking right at you when I'm actually reading my notes. Um, so let's talk about the trip. This is my first time to Universal uh, Florida, uh, to any Universal Park. Um, oh, you know what? I should probably just say this. I'm a Comcast employee. Uh, they own Universal, so I don't know if like people are going to think like I'm some kind of paid shill or something like that, but Comcast did not pay for my trip in any way, uh, blah, blah, blah. This is just me, regular citizen. Okay, now that that legal jargon is out of the way. Um, so yeah, first time there. Uh, my daughter had just finished reading the Harry Potter books, so we are like, you know what? We should go see the Harry Potter world at uh, Universal. And so that's where the trip came from. Um, we went for four days, actually three days. The fourth day was kind of like a travel day. Uh, we went over Thanksgiving, which, by the way, I just want to say, um, if you're ever going to go to a theme park, definitely go during some holiday. I went to Disney once uh, over Christmas, and the park was like, I don't know, 10% full. Um, same thing happened uh, for Thanksgiving. On Thanksgiving Day, which is our first day in the parks, um, the place was just lovely because there was just almost nobody there. It was just glorious. Uh, the day after, which was Friday, um, was kind of crowded. I'm assuming that that's uh, people who came to visit their families in Florida and they, uh, you know, saw their families and then they had an extra day and they're like, oh, hey, let's go to Universal for the day. So there was sort of a ramp up on Friday and then Saturday uh, psh, back down again, uh, which is really uh, awesome. Um, and I'll talk a little about uh, Harry Potter in a little bit. But the Harry Potter stuff is ridiculously popular. So on Friday, it was like, it was like wall to wall people. And this is like on like, on, I think, like a lower than normal capacity day. So on a regular, you know, peak holiday time, I can only say be prepared for that, uh, for that little part of the park to be painful. That's all I can say about that. Uh, we stayed at um, Lowe's Sapphire Resort, which is kind of like their mid to high level-ish hotel. Um, I just chose that because it just, uh, I don't know, looked like a nice hotel. And uh, I was really excited about the boat that takes you from there to the park. Um, there's probably other hotels that have that. So I have nothing really to say about that hotel, stay that hotel, don't stay at that hotel. I will say that if you do stay at that hotel, it's quite nice. Uh, and the the two restaurants that we went to, uh, and I should have looked them up and put them in my notes, but I did not put them in my notes, uh, were pretty good. Uh, one of them was actually really good, uh, surprisingly. Uh, I was just, by the way, just waving at a little piece of dust. I don't know why I did that. Um, okay, so... Uh, we also, when we booked our hotel, got like a multi-park pass, and I paid extra for the express pass. And uh, I'm going to, uh, let's see if, where if that is in my notes. Yes. That is in my notes a little later. So we're going to talk about the express pass. I think it's called the express pass. Fast pass, express pass. I don't really exactly remember the name of it. I think it's express pass. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, let's talk about pricing. One of the things that, I, and I'm not talking about like hotel pricing, I'm talking about like, uh, well, one of the things that when I was doing research for this trip, I learned, or at least uh, was was led to believe, was that everything in the park uh, was going to be crazy expensive, and they were basically going to be gouging me at every single possible moment. Um, I actually found that to be not the case. 
Um, I mean, things were a little pricey everywhere, um, but, uh, you know, it's to be expected. Uh, but it wasn't, like, out of control. Like, they could have been way more expensive. And, I'm, and I'm, I guess I'm talking mostly about uh, food. Um, we didn't do much in the way of souvenirs, with the uh, exception of a wand, which I'll get into in a moment. Um, and, uh, yeah, so pricing was actually reasonable. I mean, if you're going to go to a theme park, you're going to be spending some money. You know that. So, but it's not, like, painful. With the exception of one thing, at least this was painful to me, um, we don't really drink soda. Uh, so uh, everywhere in the park, soda is, uh, well, fountain soda is uh, like around 350 which of course is a lot, yes. Um, but uh, in lieu of soda, we drink water. So uh, guess how much a bottle of water was? Can you guess? $5 which is insane, right? I mean, you're paying $5 for water, three fifty dollars for, you know, water with a bunch of sugar in it. <laughs> so uh, the water situation was a little out of control. Um, but however, you can go into the park with a, uh, you know, a, uh, a Nalgene bottle or, you know, a water bottle of some kind. And there is places to refill water uh, for free. Um, so... The only reason we paid the five dollars for the water is because at the moment we had forgotten our, our our bottle and whatever and i was like i said two waters please and the lady's like oh eleven dollars and i was like what i just asked for two waters 550 each that's with tax crazy town um but that was pretty much the only thing that i thought was a little out of control uh pricing wise um what else oh yeah so we had an app uh, you know they have an app that they give you uh, I played around the app. I did not find a lot of value in the app at all, uh, other than sort of tell me like, oh, wait times were X amount, uh, so don't go to this ride or that ride. So I don't know. I, I didn't play enough with the app to really appreciate it. Uh, I didn't find it that super valuable. Uh, yeah, so I talk about Lowe's. I'm trying to remember the name of the two restaurants. I'm going to remember right now because I have my Lowe's little map here. Uh, let's see. There's a restaurant uh, downstairs at Lowe's called the Amatisa Cookhouse. That place uh, pretty much will do like the buffet breakfast and like dinner and lunch and stuff. That place was good. I thought the breakfast was actually fairly, it was a little high, but it wasn't like crazy high for the breakfast. Um, uh, the dinner was, I think, a little a little too pricey. We didn't actually try dinner there because, like, the menu looked a little pricey. But we did eat dinner at the Strongwater Tavern, which you're like, oh, a stupid sports bar. They actually have, like, a like it's really actually pretty fascinating. They have all these Caribbean foods there from all different zones. Like, oh, here's Puerto Rico, and here's, uh, you know, Cuba, and here's – I can't remember all my Caribbean countries. But the food there actually was remarkably good. Uh, and if you're into cocktails, they are actually pretty good too. Um, and the price was not too bad. Again, uh, it was pretty, pretty decent. So I would recommend that place if you're staying at the Sapphire, uh, Falls. Uh, right. Okay. That's all I have to say about Sapphire Falls. The pool is pretty nice. Not like super duper, but it's, it's pretty nice. Uh, I would imagine all the pools at all the hotels are pretty good. Uh, so let's just talk about the park. I didn't know this at first, and I wish somebody had told me this. Um, but here's here's how the sort of the park uh, works in terms of like layout. Um, there is uh, a water park. It's called Volcano Bay, and uh, I will talk about that in a moment. Um, actually, a decent water park. Um, then there's two theme parks. So there's there's Universal Studios Florida, which I guess is the original one. And then there's the Island of Adventure, which is another park. They're like two, literally two separate parks um, that I imagine for some people you might need different tickets for. We had like a multi-park ticket, which I would advise you to get because then you have flexibility to go wherever you want at any time. Um, and then there's this thing called City Walk. Uh, and City Walk is kind of like Disney's got the same thing. I forget what it's called, but whatever. City Walk is kind of like just like a little outdoor walking area with a bunch of restaurants and some shops and stuff. Um, and City Walk is kind of, well, can you see this? Here's City Walk, right? 
So City Walk is kind of like the central focus. I think if you're coming into Universal with a car, like you come in this way, and then uh, you can walk right over here to Universal, or you can walk over here to Islands of Adventure. And then uh, to get to Volcano Bay, which is like sort of a separate spot, you kind of have to take a shuttle bus. Um, but anyway, if you take the little boat that I was talking about from Sapphire, that kind of shows up right. It just drops you off right here at City Walk. So City Walk's kind of like the central location here uh, that connects you to everything. And you can like walk from one to the other. Now the question is, can you go from Universal directly to Islands of Adventure? The answer is no, with the exception of this train, which is called the Hogwarts Express which I will talk about in a minute. Um, but so if you're planning your, your trip or whatever, there's basically two theme parks that you want to go to. And then if you have extra time and you want to go to a water park, you can go to Volcano Bay. Um, we went to Volcano Bay uh, and on um, Thursday, uh, the first day on Thanksgiving Day, and uh, it was a little overcast, so it was not like a super experience because I was like kind of cold half the time. But um, it was actually a very nice water park. There is a crazy uh, ride there. I'm going to call it a ride, but it's not really a ride. Um, like, you, it, when you, if you go, check out the volcano. There's all kinds of cool things. One of which, by the way, and I don't have my map in front of me, um, one of which is like this kind of like water roller coaster thing, which is like super fun. Uh, my daughter is nine, uh, and she's uh, she, she loved it, so it's not like it's totally good for kids. It's like a weird, it's like not really like a log flume. It's actually the opposite. Like you actually kind of like casually go down these things and then you get zipped up to the, these to these high points and you're going like in and out of the volcano. Um, that's a lot of fun. Um, the other uh, thing that I did there, which was terrifying, uh, which is like this, I forget what it's called, but it's like the, this, the drop or whatever. And it's like literally at the top of this volcano and you get into this tube and then... Uh, and then the floor, the floor literally drops out and you just go straight down. Um, it was one of the most intense uh, physical experiences that I've ever experienced at a theme park of any kind. Uh, it's, it's obviously, you know, it's water slide. Um, but you were, I mean, when that, you get into this tube and, and, and they have this music and they have these drums. It's like, and, and, and you're like, oh my God the floor is going to drop out. And then before you even have a chance to finish that thought, the, the floor disappears and, and you just, you go down and it's a long, it's, well, it's, maybe it's like four seconds, but it feels like a really long time. And um, I could not keep my eyes open. I had to close my eyes and just say, this will be over soon. And then when it was over, I was like, oh my God, that was amazing. And I made my girlfriend do it. Um, so uh, I, it's scary, uh, but it's pretty awesome. So I highly recommend that. Um, Okay, that's pretty much all I'm gonna say about Volcano Bay. Um, they give you this really cool like wristband thing. Uh, totally get that. Oh, here's what I wanna say about that. If you get that, oh, this is why you need the app. Use the app to hook your credit card up to that. And then you can just have that throughout the park. It's just Volcano Bay. You can just have that throughout the park. You can use it to beep into a locker. Uh, uh, so you can keep like your towels or your clothes or whatever. You can also use it wherever you buy things. You can just beep into things and buy them. So you don't have to carry a wallet or anything else. Uh, I highly recommend, uh, get, they will give you that wristband, but I highly recommend linking it up with your uh, credit card. Uh, yeah, so that's it for Volcano Bay. Are you guys really bored? It's 15 minutes of chatting. I hope you're not bored. Okay, um, actually it doesn't matter to me if you're bored or not. I mean, you're getting good information, right? Uh, okay, let's, I'm looking at my notes. One second here. Talk about the property, uh, city walk, right? Oh, let me, one other thing about the boat. If you are taking the boat back to your hotel, and I think it goes back to like four different, there's four different boats that go to different hotels. Uh, at night, uh, the lines for the boat are just like ridiculous. Like I'm talking like an hour wait. Um, to take this little boat ride back to your hotel. Um, you can walk. There's like pathways from City Walk to all your hotels. And our hotel is kind of far, like relatively. Um, it was an easy walk and it maybe took 15 minutes. And it's actually kind of nice. You walk along the water and you know, you see the other boats go by and you pass by other people and whatever. So uh, in the morning, definitely take the boat. Not a generally a, like a long wait for the boats from the hotel that I experienced. Uh, but on the way home, uh, I would suggest walking 
uh, along the path. So just to let you know that that is possible. We actually didn't know it was possible for a little while, and then somebody was like, why don't you walk? And we're like, oh, we can do that, and then we did. And we were very happy about it, so I'm telling you now. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. In the evening, if you want to eat somewhere, uh, City Walk uh, actually has a ton of restaurants. We tried two of them. One is called um, Cowfish, which is like a weird uh, burger sushi place where they sort of fuse them together in weird ways. Uh, that place was actually pretty good. Uh, the sushi was like, you know, mid-level. It wasn't like amazing sushi, but it was definitely competent. It was definitely good. And the burgers were actually really good. Uh, and the price wasn't too bad. Um, so that is definitely a place where you might want to check out. Uh, right next to it is an Italian restaurant, which I don't, uh, let's see if I see the name. No, it's not on this map, but there is an Italian restaurant right next to it, uh, which makes like their own pastas and all this stuff. And that place was actually fairly good as well. Not like super amazing Italian food, um, but, uh, not too bad. I did not pay the check for that one. Uh, we were with my uh, my mom uh, and uh, stepfather, and they paid for that one. So I, I don't know how expensive it was, but I can't imagine it was like out of control. Um, but of course, uh, you can check the menu yourself. Um, food there was was decent. Um, they had a good wine selection too, if you're into wines. Um, anyway, oh, it's called Vivo. I just saw it on the on the on the map here. Uh, yeah, Vivo, pretty good. Okay, that's all I really have to say about City Walk. Okay, uh, early access. When you stay at a hotel, you get to get to the parks uh, like an hour early, but that part was like really confusing. Um, like depending on the day, like early access like was like to uh, Volcano Bay, you get an hour early, but if, it's, if it, but if it's Friday, you get to go to Island of Adventure an hour early. And then if it's a uh, universal, that's like on Saturday, but it's only the Harry Potter part. It's like, it was crazy. I could not decipher like what time, uh, you know, we could get in early and early access gets you in at like 8 a.m., which is kind of like, I don't know. It depends. I guess if you're ready for like a day or so, you really want to get there at 8 a.m., but that was a little too early for us. Um, so we shot to get there at nine um, and the lines to get in, uh, just to get in, uh, were actually, uh, you know, like I said, they're 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 pretty heavy on Friday. They are non-existent, literally non-existent on Thursday, and they were okay on Saturday. Like I'm talking like 15 minutes on Saturday, but on Sun on Friday it was like 20 minutes or 25 minutes or whatever. And those aren't obviously again super heavy days, so uh, you know plan accordingly. Um, but um, like maybe even if you're going to enter at nine, get there at 8:30. And then you can get to the front of the line, so you just get right in. Um, but if you're if you're like doing like if you're just going there for a day, which I do not advise, if you want to see everything, um, you definitely want to get there super early. And uh, that's because I'm going to talk about uh, the lines uh, for the rides. Now remember, again, I was going during a holiday, and even during a holiday some of the lines for the rides were like ridiculously long. Um, <laughs> I can't, uh, so we, I'm gonna, we got the express pass or the fast pass or whatever it's called. I think it's called express pass. Um, and even with that, some of the rides like felt like, oh gee, even with the express pass, we waited, you know, 25 minutes to get on this ride, 30 minutes to get on this ride. And it was like a two minute ride and a five minute ride. It was like, okay. Um, but if we had to wait, like, and trust me, people were waiting this long, two hours to get on this ride, and I'm just using that as an example, um, we would not have been happy, <laughs> number one. Like, we would have been like, oh, we waited two hours to get on this ride. It was good, but it was not worth waiting two hours for. And I can only imagine if you're trying to, like, ride, like, five or six rides, or you're there for a day or something like that, uh, you're not going to be able to, you're going to be either running around the park like a lunatic trying to like get from ride to ride to try to get everything in uh, or or you're just not going to be able to get everything in. Um, so I 100% uh, advise you to get the express pass because even with the express pass like in two days we were not well sorry in the two days that we we're in the both parks we did get to ride everything we wanted to ride. 
but you know, just barely. Uh, so, and that's with the fast, I'm gonna call it the fast pass sometimes, I apologize, but that's even with the fast pass. So, um, and some of those rides, and I'll, I'll try to go into each of the rides in a minute. Um, some of those rides uh, were not worth the wait even with the express pass, which that says a lot. Anyway, um, so yeah, get the express pass. It's like, I don't care, I don't know how much it is because I bought it as a package, but I don't know, I can't imagine that it's that much more. Maybe the ticket to the park is like a hundred bucks and the express pass is like 40. Get the express pass. Uh, you will be very happy about that. Okay, so uh, this video has gone on for 20 minutes and uh, I think I've just now decided that I'm gonna make this like a multi-part video. So uh, this is the end of part one. Uh, in part two, I'm going to uh, talk about the actual rides and Harry Potter and uh, a couple other little details. So uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in part two. Uh, I think all you have to do is just, you know, click on the video that says part two and press play. So I'll see you in a moment.